Lindstein during the hole. So, so this is Connie Hoglin. I think I got it right this time. Um, she's going to give us an update on R Rwanda. If you're not aware, um, Connie's been there, what, how many years now? Four times. This, is her, this year was her fourth time. And if you were at TMC 16, uh, she shared with us a little bit about um, what work she did last summer in Rwanda. So we have an update. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, so like Lisa said, I talked about this last year during my favorite. And um, here is the link to that if you weren't here last year and you would like to watch the YouTube video um, here, uh, intrigued by what I'm talking about and you want to hear more about it. Um, I'm kind of skipping over the first three trips and just focusing on what, um, we, what happened this year on my trip. Um, so in case you're like me, you didn't actually know where Rwanda is, um, it's in kind of the central East Africa, um, so that's where we're talking about in the world. So how I got involved with African New Life is um, I started sponsoring Eric, and um, that happened in 2013, and then I went on a trip, went on two trips in 2014, a trip in 2016, and then I went in June this year. Um, so that's Eric, that's how I got involved um, with African New Life. Um, so this happened yesterday, and just to give you guys some context about what I'm walking into when I go into classrooms in Rwanda, um, Chris Shore said this yesterday, the students are so trained to give the information back in the same way they received it. This is true for our classrooms, but it's true times 10 or 100 in Rwandan classrooms. It's just rote memorization, and we're trying to break um, the teachers and the students of that, and it's, um, it's a process. Um, it's a process in our classrooms, but it's also a process um, in Rwanda. So um, just so that you have some context about what I'm walking into that's uh, that really resonated with me yesterday. Um, so some of the schools um, that are run by African New Life, one is in uh, a town called Kijeo, and it's about four hours away from Kigali, which is the capital where we were staying. And in Kijeo, there's a primary school that goes from um, primary one to primary six, so first grade through sixth grade, and then they have a middle school that's senior one through senior three, which is seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Um, and so as those students get older, they're starting to add um, senior four, senior five, and senior six, so um, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, then Bujasera, this is where Eric goes to school. Um, Bujasera is 45 minutes away from Kigali, and um, they have just a primary school called Kibanga Primary School. And it is now the top school in the province. Last year it was second in the province, and this year um, they've moved up to the number one spot, which is really exciting. Um, and two weeks ago, a team was there building a high school for that community that's also going to be run by African New Life. So um, lots of change in this community, and um, this is just a picture of the school, and then the bottom picture is the kitchen, and we serve lunch one day to the kids. So that's a picture of uh, where they cook and serve lunch. Um, Kayonsa is the best school in Rwanda, and um, this is where I spent a, a week of my trip. I, I lived out at this school, and so I woke up and did the entire day with all of these teachers and um, just got to experience what life is really like in Kayonsa, um, and that's about an hour and a half away from Kigali. Um, so some really exciting things that have happened since last year, they got a computer lab, uh, they have the room for it, but they just didn't have computers in it yet. So they have the computer lab, and then they also built three science labs. So there's a biology lab now, a physics lab, and a chemistry lab. So we were in the chemistry lab, and um, five students over here on the left, um, five students did just a, a lab for us. They just demonstrated some of the, the things that they can do now, um, and that was actually the first time they ever used the lab. And it's that new, so that's, um, that was really exciting to see. And um, in the middle of the picture is Amanda Taylor. Um, so any of you that are from California, LA area, she's actually presented with John Stevens, and so um, they, they're friends, and so it was really funny because uh, my, my two worlds kind of collided a little bit, and Amanda um, and John Stevens know each other, and have presented and um, are like 
Google search my trainer. So um, getting to talk about Classroom Chef and things while I was in Rwanda with people who actually like know about this community was really, really exciting. So to give you some details about my trip, uh, week one and week two, we were in classrooms and we um, just did classroom observations. We did some debriefing with teachers and um, just trying to help improve their, their teaching while we were there. Um, and then one day during week two, we got to spend some time with um, high school graduates and um, helping them plan for their future and how to build a resume and that kind of thing. Um, which is something that I do in addition to teaching math in Houston. So that was cool. Um, in between those two weeks, we did a teacher conference. And this is where I started to get to share the mid boss with Rwanda um, in kind of a bigger way. So the teacher conference, there's about 150 teachers from the African Life schools and some partner schools that have, um, that have sponsored children going to school there. And um, during this conference, we uh, there's a team of there was a team of ten of us this year, and we broke into groups of three to four, and we led an hour and a half to two hour sessions at the teacher conference. And so during my session, I chose to share which one doesn't belong, um, and that was really really cool because I chose something that wasn't math really. Um, it was just a, a clock picture and. Um, as I separated the room, so this is a 360 picture of the, of the room that we were in, and I separated everyone into different corners of the room and walked around with the mic and basically said, okay, what's your reasoning? And these teachers who don't teach math came up with, well, this angle, I chose this particular clock because it's an acute angle versus the other ones that are all obtuse angles. And I just, like, my mind was completely blown because um, it's a classroom, or it's a room full of people who don't necessarily teach math, and I got a math answer from it, um, which is super powerful for our classrooms when we use um, which one does it belong. Um, so I loved, love, love sharing that with them um, and getting to see them think in different ways and hopefully translate that into their classrooms. Here's some more pictures from the teacher conference. So just sharing like thumbs up, thumbs down, really simple things that we do in our classrooms all the time, um, but getting to see teachers do those things was really cool. Um, then week three, this was not part of the team. I chose to stay an extra week to stay at the high school. So that, that last high school um, picture that I showed you, um, that's where I was staying. And this is just some pictures of uh, their textbook. Uh, one of the teachers uses the textbook a lot just for a list of problems because everything they have is on the chalkboard and um, everything is written um, from the board, like the kids have to copy everything. So. Um, in order to save some time, he uses, utilizes the, the textbook for that. So that's just some examples of what, um, I think seventh grade is what this was, um, maybe eighth grade, about. So here's some classrooms. Uh, the picture on the left, um, the man standing next to me is teacher John, and he uh, teaches the upper level grades, and um, at the teacher conference I said, John, what you really need to do is just start reading the internet. And um, I got that idea from you guys. And like, read the internet and get some ideas about what you can do in your classroom. And so when I was in his room a week later, he had two kids stand up at the front with a string, and um, he was talking about convergence that day. So he had the students cut the string in half. And then what's left, they had the, him, he had them cut that string in half, and then in half again and half again and half again until he couldn't cut it in half anymore. And the kids got to see convergence happen before their eyes. And so it was just really cool to start to see um, a teacher take a little bit of advice, um, go read the internet. He got that idea off the internet and took what um, resources, very little resources they have available to him, and he was able to use that in his classroom. And then uh, the teacher on the right, um, that's Teacher Rogers, and he, uh, I saw his classroom on my very first teacher trip. So getting to see his classroom four years later um, and how much improvement he's made um, in just using new things and um, using visuals and just thinking more outside the box was really exciting. So that's Teacher Rogers. Um, they were talking about similar figures that day. And then uh, Teacher Charles is another math teacher 
Um, couldn't really see the chalk, so I made it bigger for you. Um, so Charles had kids come to the front of the room, and he, uh, one of the examples the kids gave for an inequality was point two is less than or equal to one fifth. And I was just blown away because in my classroom, my kids would be like, one is less than three, and they're seniors in high school. And um, they would give me whole numbers. And the fact that a kid that's in seventh grade came up and gave a decimal and a fraction and said that they were less than or equal to each other was really, really exciting. Um, and then the picture on the right, uh, John was teaching uh, logical reasoning, and um, he was just using P's and Q's. And I was like, hey, John, maybe this is boring, and that you should let the kids get involved in some way. And so I gave them an example. I was like, P is Houston um, is in Texas, and not P is Houston is not in Texas. And so I was like, hey, kids, do you have any ideas for what else you could write? And they just came up with all different types of things. And instantaneously, they were engaged in the lesson. And um, just giving them ideas of how they could change the things that they have to teach, but also making them engaging um, was, was really cool. So here's some of the ways that I've brought the MIPOS to Rwanda. Uh, so last year, I used I Notice I Wonder during the teacher conference. This year I use which one doesn't belong. Um, two of the biggest things were encouraging teachers to use the internet to look for tools and strategies, but to take those things that they're reading on the internet, where if they're reading things from US teachers, we have computers and we have phones and we have all sorts of technology, but they also have resources. Um, it may look like chalk and um, trees and leaves and rocks and it's, they just look different, but they are the experts in their Rwandan classrooms and they know what resources they have, and that's really powerful for them to read the internet and then translate that to what resources they have. Um, and then just encouraging them to try and not be afraid to try um, new things and new methods, even though um, it might fail. So if you want to know more, I would love to chat with you. Um, so there's my Twitter, my website, um, where you can read all about all four trips to Rwanda and um, the video from last year. And then um, if you're interested in going on the trip, AfricanNewLife.org, um, or I can put you in touch with other people. So thank you guys.